Hi, welcome to the table. My name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm Mark Wendell. And today we're joined by... I'm Mark Cook. Uh, and we're doing our house rules. We're looking at Sentient, which is a relatively new game that's come out. Uh, and today, Mark and Mark are both <laughs> going to try and work out how it plays just by looking at the components. Now, um, usually we don't let them see the back of the box either, but because there's some tricky things in this one, um, we're going to let them look at the back of the box as well. Uh, just before we launch in though, uh, Marcus, uh, you've been on the odd video on the channel, haven't you? But yeah, sure. Could you explain briefly who you are? Yeah, uh, so I'm one of the founders and organisers of Aircon, which is a gaming convention up in Harrogate, uh, which is coming up in March. Um, yeah, a big open gaming convention, so and play lots and lots of games. All right, great. We were there last year, we're definitely going to be there next year as well. Um, all right, so have you, I'm assuming you haven't heard of Sentient before. No. All right, great. Mm -hmm. So just to give you some theme, I'm going to read out what it says on the back of the box. So the next great technological revolution is here. Sentient robots for information, transportation, industry, all at our fingertips. Building them is now the easy part. Programming them has proven to be more complicated. A handful of companies have emerged claiming to pull it off, but only one will, will, it, will win out. Your mission is clear. Procure valuable robots and plug them into your network. They'll have an effect on your systems. Anticipate it correctly, calibrate your bots effectively, and attract the right investors to win and lead the sentient revolution. So that's what it says. And there is a picture of the game kind of halfway through on the back of the box, which we're gonna let them have a look at. Uh, but other than that, and the components set out at the start of the game, this I should say is for a two-player game, obviously, okay. uh, they're going to have to work out how to play the game. Uh, how do you fancy your chances on this one? <laughs> <laughs> Looks tricky. I must admit, when I first looked at this, I was a bit like, uh, I'm not sure I could figure this out. But actually, well, I'll leave you to it. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's doable. We'll see how they okay. do. So... Handily, the box gives a nice thing of ordering. So it's the first thing you do is procure a bot. Which are these? Which are these guys? Now I don't know how these numbers set on the dice. Most games it involves rolling them, but I don't think it does. You no, know, it doesn't feel like because that would be quite tricky in how mm. you'd. Because I think so the procure the bot is related to what this is your how you procure them. So that would mean it needs to be near a, a, a red four, a purple four. So that one would mean. So I'm not sure on that bit. I so I went somewhere different yeah. with it, where I think that this is related to the points. I think you're right on that. But if you look on the back of the box, you can see down here where they are. So that says. Yeah. It's hard to see from the camera, but the left and right total of those is seven. Seven. But I think that's just telling you that's what scores the points. Okay. So if you satisfy that requirement, Which you get, you get that amount of points. Because there's some with question marks. Which is the value, the lower value lower, to yeah, either side. Minus one. one. So yeah. if you had it in here, it was zero. zero. But if you stack them up. Because there was one, this one, it's like... There's two scoring conditions for that one, isn't there? Yeah, so I think it's if you match both of these, I think that might have something to, yeah, the, uh, to do with... The symbology. <sighs> Maybe? Is that though, is that... So that one would have to be a four, and you would score one of those, you would score the lower amount. <laughs> either that, or if they're both four, then you get seven points. If either Maybe. of them four, you get two. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, just... I feel the plus and equals is very yeah. relevant. So whether that means that that has to be great. Oh no, that but... plus that equals that. Okay. So... If that was six, okay. So if that's four, uh, two plus two four, plus four, four equals, equals six. six. But it's, no, because that doesn't. And then how do that you makes get the two? scoring very difficult for. So mm. those, the triangle, well, these things yeah. are investors, aren't they? Essentially, yes. which are there are each investor relates to a dice color. Yes. Like lots of things. Apart from I can't figure if is that orange there. Service. Yeah, you're right actually. That's got, the only one I couldn't find the colour for. Purple, pink, green, green blue. blue. Yes. <laughs> Unless it's Purple, pink, wild. Green. And I looked, so these are all exactly the same yeah. with the stacks. They have one of each. 
in each of these stacks. So I guess we go through three phases yeah. or ages or something, eras, and then we uh, maybe a final scoring one or the end game. Yeah. And then they also show these kind of along like this, but when you get matching ones, they kind of stack instead. Are they allowing you to adjust the dice per chance? So that is that yeah. letting you know that you can either increase or alter yeah. the dice by one, depending on how many you've got? I mean, it's just a it's a guess because there isn't really any information other than their actual investor yeah. type on them. What's do these only appear in ages two and three? So I guess they're so, in there, yeah. but that's why they. Or yeah. Why they're... So maybe you have to reset after each age. So we're definitely agreeing these are points. I. Th yeah. I think that's not, that unless they that... are different to these. Yes. And so these are maybe something to do with how you acquire them. So <laughs> it means those. It's that symbolism. It's the, but you don't start with no. any kind of currency. It doesn't seem. Apart from. So unless there's some kind of bidding. Yeah, because we haven't really send, discovered what these are. Send people out to say, I want to go and have this one. Um, almost like area control. Calibrate the next network's dice. So it seems like it might be dice Cal kind of calibration. Manipulation. So that's, yeah, that's, you're so adjusting you these. put them up and down. But they've... On the example on the back of the box, they've yeah. definitely adjusted some of these where they don't have the matching ones of these. Yeah, it's not um, the numbers. So if we have like example the box four and a three, and it's got a plus and what's the one on the grid? The one on the right of the green. Um, so plus is that a minus? equals? So four plus three equals seven. Uh, see, I believe that's eight minus the value of those two is how many points you get. So, so I'd get two. two. But yeah, yeah it's the getting that you, from there to there which is Which I think must be these. Yeah. Because there's nothing else. There's no spots for them. But we don't see them anywhere on it's the back. Seeing as though it's kind of influence. Some of it was influencing. Mm -hmm. Did it say somewhere? I mean, the cogs would suggest relate to bots just mm. as a. <laughs> then better then than. These are your, your dudes. Because this is your industry, essentially, that you've created. Because the. See the coin, or whatever these are, yeah. if they are coins, yeah. um, are in three piles as well. Whether that matches the three rounds in some way, so instead in the next round, instead of them, you move up to the fives, you move the tens, up to fives, and then the tens. That's possible because we definitely got like ones, or I mean, I don't even know how you get these unless I'm assuming that because you have the yeah, most if guys, you there. take that, yeah. Oh, of course, so these are the age ones. That's yeah. why you can't see. Yes. Yes. So the ones you. That's why we can't see the. <laughs> yeah. Um, and whether this just lets you adjust dice? <laughs> so we're trying to win investors, yeah. but then let us let us gain cards, and then we score at some point somehow, we score the cards based on that row, yeah. and that's the points you get. Yes. We're still not sure what the, the, the symbology of. A bit above it. No, but I think it must be that if you have more of these things, yeah. you maybe get free moves yeah. of your dice up and down. That seems And whether you can sensible. go from six to one and one yeah. to six, because otherwise. So the more investors, <coughs> the more you can adjust that industry type of dice. Yes. And you can. Yeah, because there's definitely an empty slot here as well, so you yeah. might not necessarily have to have four. Yeah things out each time but the more you have out the more points you can get Still see I'm assuming because that's red and anything that's red seems to be referencing dice yeah because they're red I'm assuming they are somehow related to the dice okay just by the base the colors the same but I'm still not certain unless it's as you Claim this. You take one, one you off can, that. And you can, or you can just yeah. subtract. That has to. You have to change that to a lower number, yeah. and you have to change that to a higher number than what it already is. That would, and then the equals would mean you have to stay, have to stay the same. same. But if you have greater power in in that specific industry, then you can, you can affect that more. Yeah. Because <laughs> that one is also the same color as that dice. Yeah. So, but. 
I think the the, the colour is definitely the dice. Yes, it's, it's the yeah. dice. So it's not a specific dice. Up no. Down. I think it might be that. Then. <laughs> yeah. That, that, mean that, that means you can move that dice yes, up and so that Yes, that's dice how you down. can also adjust the dice. It's both <coughs> the cards that then affect the dice. Yes. All right, that's time up, I'm afraid, so I'm back. Um, now, you, I was a little worried, actually. <laughs> For a lot of that, they weren't doing very well. <laughs> but actually, the key thing I think you got right before the end there, um, in terms of how you acquire the cards, you're right in that effectively you are acquiring these cards and they go down here and they score you points. These are points. Right. Um, it's just currency, though, so they don't kind of ascend and get better as you go through. You just change as you need to. Um, but the key idea in terms of how you acquire them is a bit simpler than I think you were expecting, if I just put these back. When it's your turn, you take one of your guys and you put it above the card that you want. So let's say I want this card, then I take this, and you put it in one of the slots down here. And the key idea which you got right is that these things at the top left and top right of the cards modify the dice. At the start of the game, you roll all of your dice, so that determines an initial setup. But after that, you don't roll the dice again. They sort of only change as you would claim the cards. So if you take this card, this would make this one go up by one, and this one, because it's an equals, would stay the same. And the different cards have different requirements that then score you points. So in this case, you need the dice on either side to be fours. If one of them is a four, you'd get two points. If they're both fours, you'd get seven points. So this one, again, you put it here, it would leave this one the same. It would upgrade that one to a two. And then you take the lower number from either side and subtract one, and that's your score. Mm -hmm. So obviously the different cards, some cards want very high numbers, some cards want very small numbers, uh, and if you look through the deck, there's a variety of different, so some like this one just require particular numbers, mm -hmm. uh, some like this one, you need the sum of the dice either side, if we put it here, the sum has to be even. And generally, the easier ones to accomplish in terms of your dice are worth fewer points. So this is only worth three points, Whereas getting a four on both sides is more difficult, so you can potentially get seven points for that. Uh, these things, though, are a little bit trickier. Uh, if you notice on the back of the box, you can also place these here. And essentially, you were right. I think one of you talked about area control at some point, fighting for these. And that is correct. At the end of the game, uh, I should say, after you've taken one of them, they're replaced. So you would take one, you replace it, and then Mark, you would decide to take this one, and you replace it with another one until you've got four cards so once you've got four cards out here you should both have four cards then you score and at this point you're going to have various people in places potentially with the assistance and you're doing area control for the things on either side so this one you're looking at who has the most on either side of it in this case it's yellow so they would claim the information thing which sort of slots onto here like this uh, and these just, although when you take a card you have to place one of your men, you can choose to add the assistant and that affects the area control at the end. So the sec whoever gets second place for these would get the extra points. So although uh, Mark in this case gets the token, sorry it was yellow wasn't it, would go over here. Uh, if red is second then they're going to get a sort of 50 okay. point consolation prize. So again in this one, this is a tie for the transport one, but the um, workers are more important than the assistants, so red would claim this, and that would go here. Yellow would get second place. So you go through claiming these. Now, in terms of what these do, I liked your idea, actually, about being able to modify the dice more, um, but actually it doesn't work like that. <laughs> um, it's just a straight um, end game scoring, effectively. Okay. So after each round, you clear off all the cards and keep those for the end of the game, and you require a fresh set of cards. And at the end of the game, these are multipliers for the number of cards of the different types. So if you had three industry cards at the end, and you had two of these industry tokens, then each of the yeah. industry cards is worth two points. So just some end game scoring effectively from those. So in terms of how you win the game, it's obviously most points, but it's mainly each round you're getting a stack of points according to how many of these requirements you've satisfied. And then at the end of the game, you're multiplying the number of cards by these multipliers that you've acquired through the area control. Um, one other thing which I think it would have been very difficult to spot is that when you place one of these, 
you can actually add one of your assistants onto the appropriate modifier to stop it doing its thing. So if you didn't mm -hmm. want to increase this mm -hmm. by two, you could put that there and then it would remain there. But obviously, the more of these you're using to prevent them changing your dice, the yeah, less you're using for the area control and harder it is to score the points there. Um, yes, you were right about the round tracker here. That was right. Uh, there is one thing though, you'll often find in a lot of games when you're picking from a selection, after a while you might find a selection isn't very good because mm -hmm. people are taking the cards yeah. that they want and what you're left with isn't very good. There's generally some way of clearing out the cards and getting a new set mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if you realised but you've got an extra one of these. Uh, okay. And that's what this is for. Effectively, if you decide you want to pass and get rid of all the cards, then you clear them all out, they go away, you get a fresh set of cards and then obviously you've got a much better choice for the next turn, but to indicate that you've done that, you take your token and you put it on the next round. This determines player order for the next round, um, but once you have no more of these guys to use, you have to kind of pass and then you put yours there. So in this case, it means red is going to be going first and the other will be second. So although you can clear them out, it means you're going to go later mm -hmm. in the turn order in later rounds. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Great. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. Um, if I had to give you a rating, uh, I think it would be a six, maybe. I think it would have been a lot lower if they hadn't figured out the modifying the dice yeah. there towards the end. I'm very glad you got that. Um, yeah. Do you feel it was achievable, or do you think there were some things you were just never going to get? I think it was the how you get the cards thing was yeah. The, yeah. the hardest, and maybe because these tokens are different to have the points on the card. Oh, maybe the ten is yeah, nice, the, yeah. The colour's different, yeah. Which is, I guess, the use of these is you've got no real obvious light. You no, know, there's no way ever gonna know if they can do that, no, or that they can even go up there. There is on the back of the box. They are kind of sitting, uh, but they're yeah. kind of just a round and about like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it's not really. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think yeah, the, there's things that are quite obvious once you get the idea that that's a dice, is in the, that very specific colour yeah. is a dice that makes that starts to make things better, but they. I think there was a little bit of lack of symbols in a few places yeah. that would have made it. And so the orange thing as well, because we couldn't find a card that matched the red dice in terms of the industry and the military and everything. Well, so I have to say, uh, I struggle a lot with the colours in this game, because there's like a yeah. pink and then a purple and the kind yeah. of mauve <laughs> colour, and all yeah, three yeah, of those yeah, yeah. seem very similar to me, particularly when you then look at the cards. Um, but yeah. Yeah. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed watching that. Um, do check out our future videos. We're going to be doing lots more of these house rules videos. Um, please like and subscribe, it makes a big difference to us if you can. Uh, thank you Mark for joining us. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. bye.